There must be something stopping your fighting, stopping your fighting, stopping your motive. There must be something stopping your rising. I've created so many songs in the show, actually, surprisingly. I mean, I'd say, yeah, I don't, I wouldn't say fully, but the idea was maybe melody. I do sing in the shower. I do like to sing in the shower, especially if I'm in a really good mood. What is your mask? Where's my mask? Yeah. Oh my god, where's my mask? I have it right here, actually. I mean, we've got a distance between each other and... No, I've got, I've got my little... Just finding a way to... Yeah, so should I rock it right now? Okay. I mean, yeah. I can put it on. So I got this little camouflage mask. Yeah. That um. Yeah, little camo thing keeps. To, I think it helps with the corona. My inspiration. My first ever inspiration. I mean, bro, like I grew up listening to Michael Jackson. And you know, you know those songs you hear as a child, and they just. There's certain artists for me, and I think for everybody that are just guaranteed inspiration. No matter what happens in your life, you don't have to be a musician. You talk about Michael Jackson, Bob Marley, all those artists that just have a permanent impact on our lifestyles and growing up. But I think as I grew older, Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder for me is just one of those. And I grew to love Stevie Wonder um, the day my, I don't know if it was my dad, somebody bought a CD. And, it, and you know, it's those CDs that have like little books inside and there's lyrics in them for every song. So it was Stevie Wonder's album called Hotter Than July. And I remember me and my sister, we used to, every day there's a little CD player and we just listen to all those songs, you know, like songs like Jammin', Didn't know you, we'll be jamming it up. You know, like all those, yeah, it's a classic project, Hotter Than July. So I think Stevie Wonder for me is top of the top for me. I think I, I think I was fascinated with yeah the fact that he's blind and he plays everything. He plays the keys, he plays the drums, he plays the guitar, harmonica. You know what I mean? Like I think that's quite impressive. I've never I've not quite seen that around. I went to his concert actually. I was lucky enough to go to a concert of his. I had the chance to go to London to just create with different people. And a few I think I had a few days left till I come back. And then these guys were like, oh shit, by the way, I just got you guys tickets to Stevie Wonder's show. And I was like, get out of here. I couldn't believe it. It's no friendly announcer. I have serious news to pass. I remember going there. I had, I had, um, I, I was this close to actually meeting him, but it was so chaotic. Everything was a mess. Well, that would have been a dream come true. Seeing him live was a dream come true. I, I knew pretty much every song. I was just singing every song, word by word. It was amazing. When did I start music? I, I, started, I started singing, in a, like freely singing, like microphone and singing at church. I was 13. And I think when I, I'd say around when I, when I was 15, 16 is when I wrote my first song. It's a gospel song. And yeah, I see, I think the 15, 16 is when I really got into songwriting. I was in a church choir for some time, so gospel music was like all that was around me for a long time. And I miss it actually. Not, I, quite, I quite miss it. I'm not, I, I would be honest with you, I'm not, I've grown up not to understand religion is something that has really gone away from me a lot because I see how religion how churches are structured and how things happen. It's, 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 as you grow, the more I grew up, the more I realized it's more of a business than actually, than actually com con connecting with the people. You know what I mean? I know this might sound a bit off topic, but you know how you go to church and, and you know it's a home for everybody, and then it's separated. It's like, you can tell there's like a gap. Like those who look quite decent and very, you know, and the kids were out there who just like torn just clothes and, stuff, and they couldn't, they couldn't get in. You know what I mean? It, it felt off for me, and I felt disconnected with it. But I do miss it. I do miss church. But yeah, I I started singing, started singing at 13, 
fully. So ever since then, I've been, I've been creating. I, I think I'd say meeting, you know, you know, like as artists, you get a spark when you meet another artist, you know? So I met other artists within school, I was still in high school. So we, we got together, created groups and different genres for myself singing on hip hop choruses. Yeah, so I was just like, whoa. So, you, you know, you, you feel something different, you know? Because I'd been doing gospel music for quite some time, singing in the choir, and then all of a sudden, boom, I just, I'm in the studio and I'm recording myself now for real. It's not like in church singing for, for the congregation, but this is like in a studio and you can hear your voice on a speaker. Like, it's fascinating, you know? For the first time it happened, and then getting feedback from people. And they're like, dude, that's great, that's amazing. I was like, it's, it gives you, it gives you, a, it gives you a spark, you know? It gives you that urge to keep going. Don't let them know, don't let them know, no, don't let them know. It, it, it felt so weird, bro. It still feels weird, I'm not gonna lie. But the more I grow, the more I create, the more I understand that it's important for me to love what I hear. It's important for me to, to enjoy what I'm creating, you know? So that time was quite complicated for sure. I was just like, whoa, so I didn't even want to listen to myself. Maybe in the studio as we're creating, but after that, it felt really weird. But yeah, obviously it's, it's the first, first, the first time was really, I remember, I'll tell you the story actually. It's my friend, Dennis, he's called Kanaka now. Um, so Kanaka is a rapper as well, slash producer. So he's the first, he, he found me at school and he said, it was home time, so he said, come to my place. I've got a studio and I want you to jump on something. And I, was, I, couldn't, I just couldn't project. I was just like, wow, this is weird. And I was too tall for the, for the microphone, so they had to get a little stool and put it, on top of the <laughs> put it on top of the table. And there was a little mic on a little stool, so I could, and he was like right here. So he's looking at me, he's like, yo, yo, Loosen up, bro. You know, like what's going on? So, so that for me was the first ever. Like, it, it was weird. It was weird. One thing I still have is stage fright. You know, being in front of people, it's loosening up a bit more as I create. But you know, you know, being in front of people, it's not easy. You know, and especially if now you're playing or singing or whatever it is. It's like you have to be. You have to have that natural ease, and so yeah. I, I mean, poof. I am actually, I'm in a relationship now that is, that I would say was love at first sight. Nah, that's really good. That's a school. <laughs> nah, we just, maybe someday. But like, yeah, I do believe in love at first sight, man. I, love, I believe in love at first sight. I believe in energy. I believe in, energy doesn't lie. Energy doesn't, that's one thing I've realized. And again, the more I grow, the more I realize. I don't even have to really say much to you for me to be like, this is good vibes and this is good energy. So yeah, I think I think it it is love of us as the, the real thing. I believe in it. Yeah, absolutely. Obama Yang, I'm now waiting to pounce. And I, yeah. I like my FIFA. If I can play FIFA, I love to play FIFA. I'm a, I'm a FIFA head. Yeah, I'm a big football <laughs> fan, you know, like, I'm an Arsenal fan. But beside that, I like, I like FIFA, my boys like FIFA. So whenever we do that, we can do that. I like, I, I grab a, have a drink with my friends every now and then, chill out. Um, um, what else should I say? Um, I think one of the things I'm trying to get into a lot more is taking care of myself, like exercising. And yeah. It's not something I'd say it's that, hard. it's not, it's, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. whoa. Like routine, you know, something I'm really adapt. I'm trying to adapt to at least, you know, and so maybe that's gonna be a new, new hobby for me soon. But other than that, I'd say my FIFA. I mean, like I've got a piano most of the times next to me. I just wake up, I jump on the piano, just create like stuff. And, yeah, and I'm things like that. Years younger. Oh, how can this be true? I met a kangaroo. And she made love like a fool. Oh, it's an old story. I actually met this friend of mine who actually, who I did sign the contract with. Um, so it was, a, you know, it, it's art. So art has a lot of risk taking. So you're like, you know what, nothing might not happen out of this. But I'm going to give it a shot and see what happens. So I did it. 
and it was a combination of going to Ethiopia and working with different people and then I went to London and I was ideally supposed to work on an album. It didn't work out because the funds didn't come through like we wanted. Um, it was really frustrating, I think, because you put a lot of effort in it and, you know, you put a lot of energy in something and all of a sudden it just, it's just gone, you know. But I learned a lot from it and I think that's the most important positive thing about it. Like what I got out of that experience is, is anything is possible, you know. And then you encounter different people who talk to, talk to you about the challenges. At that time I was quite young, but as I grow, I'm facing those challenges they were telling me, which is like, you, you, you reach a point and it's like, fuck, like, what am I, what do I do now? I'm not inspired as such. So you resort to laying back and listening to everything you can, because like, inspiration is from so many things. Music has no boundaries, so. I believe I'm at, you know, I've, I've experienced those little things. So it was a good experience, I think. That's the most important thing. That was my first ever solo experience with music education and, and working with different people that are really on another level compared to me. I mean, I was 20 years old at the time, which is like 2013, and then... So I spent a year doing music theory, working with different musicians, and it was very challenging as well. Ethiopians are genuinely very proud people. So they're really proud about their own vibes and their own sound, which is amazing. Like I, you, 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 you realize how much their own are being supported by their own. Like they're, they're supporting their own, they're pushing their own. So I learned a lot from that experience. It was challenging because I wasn't from there and a few different things. You know, my sound is a bit different. Um, yeah, but Ethiopia is where I started fully. I'd say that's where like my mind really opened up with understanding what things are. Because there was a lot of understanding of the business side of music, what music production is, um, songwriting, but in general, music theory. So which means my piano playing, a few a few exercises you, you do before going to, on stage, you know, warm ups and whatnot. Yeah. So I'm I'd, I'd say I'm a singer songwriter, and I also play the keys. I don't I don't consider myself a pianist because I have actual pianists that are just out there, but playing the piano has given me a different, has really helped me in, in my songwriting and so many other things. So I could get back to a song I wrote maybe a week ago and play the same chords and then all of a sudden, oh snap, this was a minor chord and I can make it a major chord and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to change the verse or I'm going to have to change the melody. So I think yeah, playing the piano for me is just one of those plus plus things that because it's, it's more than just playing, it's sound, it's like you, when you create a melody, even when you write, the melodies just connect, it's like a little, yeah, it's good as well. I think piano is what's, so the playing is, actually helps me go back to the song that I wrote before and I edit it and, and obviously meeting producers and then you sit down and I've created so many songs in the shower actually, surprisingly. I mean, I'd say yeah, I don't. I wouldn't say fully, but the idea was maybe melodies. But I do sing in the shower. I do like to sing in the shower, especially if I'm in a really good mood. For how long? Yeah. Wow, it's a tricky one. I think I'll choose not to answer that. Oh <laughs> Jeez, cut that. You cut that. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I'm gonna write a song and I'm just gonna improvise with it. So I, I, ideally, I'd come up with a melody and eventually the idea comes through. So the, the melody I really had was more of like... And that could be like for a chorus or something. And then an idea could be like something like Hans Gens, you know what I mean? That's like Hans Gens. We, we all know what this guy was trying to say. <laughs> you know, we know what he was trying to say. So like, he was trying to say the hands of God, right? So if you come up with a song like that, you'd be like something like, so I'll write it down and then I'll sing it. So the 
idea is sort of down. So the melody was something like. And the idea I mentioned was hands gains, because we know we know what hands gains is. I was like, it would be good in the song. So something like. <clears throat> So I did it, actually pull out my phone and I put the voice recorder on and then <laughs> and I just I just record this. So it'll be something like Hands gas, we see my ganja with the moody hands gas. I know everybody needs hands gas. Fist in the air for the hands gas. The sound there, hands gas, we see my ganja with the moody hands gas. I know everybody needs hands gas. Fist in the air for the hands gas, a Santa. So that could be an idea of a song, a chorus, and I picture somebody like Ish Kevin on it or something, you know, and then and then some hip hop would come in and yeah, so I think that's like that's sort of like an I oops I didn't stop the recording. So so that sort of thing. And then if I had the piano with me, it would be much easier of course. Because I'd play the chords and I'd know what, what structure it comes in and I'd know what to do for the verse. So if you have a chorus now, it makes the verse easier for me because I've recorded it on my phone. So I say if I'm out with my friends, I just pull out, the, pull out the recorder and record maybe the humming and the mumbling and then I get home, I can write something down. So I picture a song like Hens Gens, for example, I sit down and I'm like, maybe my verses could not be ideal and I can, I can hit up a different artist and we can collaborate on it. Somebody like Ishkevin or somebody like uh, Prime or somebody like... It could be a singer as well, you know? It could be anybody. Um, so yeah, I think that that's the ideal process for me to, to write the song. I have a song... I have a song that I'm looking forward to recording today. and It's a song I wrote in high school. So the melody was still there. But with my musical progression and so on, I've come back to the song and I've completely changed the, the lyrics to it and the, the message. But the melody and the vibe is still there. So there's, not quite, there's no time limit for it for me. So for me, it's more of like how I feel. Um, if the song at the moment is really good, it's just going to stay there, you know? But otherwise, what I do is I always revisit stuff because I'm constantly writing. I, I use my phone recorder. And that's my first step of writing. So I record myself. I could be at a bar with my friends. I could step out, go to the loo, and pull out the phone and just mumble some stuff. And then in the morning, wake up, you know, I listen to what I've recorded, and then I can go to the piano and I can write. And that's how for me, it really, that's, like, that's my structure of things. Despite the fact that I've written a few songs in the shower. in the studio but we didn't have the funds for that and that was a time where my contract with the people I was working with in the UK and whatnot kind of fell off and I was really frustrated I just wanted to release stuff I wanted to create and as an artist <clears throat> it gets quite frustrating when that doesn't happen you know I mean I say this because I get frustrated but I also know it from other artists so being frustrated as an artist is the last thing you want so I was like um, I sat down with my friend Darius, that we worked together, and we were like, shit, why don't we just record this live, you know? I've composed these songs, and I'm singing them, and I've written them, and a lot of the songs, I'd say maybe five of them on the EP, or barely mixed, were supposed to be on the album that we were working on. So I was like, you know what, this is a good opportunity to get off that from my shoulder, and just put it down, and then just change, and focus on a different feel, you know? So that's how it came up. And then OSA spoke to my friend Aristide, who recorded it at Bougainvillea. It was free entrance, and people really showed up. It was amazing, you know? I think that was the most life-changing moment for me, like, till this day. But I think top two, top two. Working with the Kingdom Choir, for me, was like up there. But nah, Bailey Mix is up there. Bailey Mix is number one, because that's the first time anything like that has happened here. You know, like an entire project being recorded, one go, one take, and 
with people around, you know what I mean? So people actually came for showcase, but they also came for recording session, you know? So that's the first time it's happened here. And yeah, nothing beats that feeling. The feeling of people appreciating the vibe, you know? Every time I listen to it, I go and sit back in that chair and I'm playing that shit again. It's like, it feels like, yeah, it's unforgettable. So I don't know if that sums up what Barely Mixed is for me. Barely Mixed is my first baby. It's, yeah, it's just one of those things, man. I'm painting my walls on the orange. My mama loves it. She likes a party. So every morning, I play her music. Kante. I remember when I wrote Kante, um, I was in the studio. I wasn't really in the best of mindsets, you know? It was, again, it was quite a frustrating time. And then I remember writing Kante, and my friend Mucho was in the studio recording, and I called up, I'm like, yo, come check this shit out. It's like, it's different, it's nice, check it out. Um, and I played it for her, and she just walked out. She just walked out, she's like, okay, boom. She didn't say shit, that was it. I, I clicked what she wanted it mean, I guess. It was really nice. Um, it was such an effortless track too, because I wrote it then and then. Like I already had the melody then and then, and then I put the songs together, or the lyrics together, and then boom, I was like, the first person I can think of was N'Golo Kante, and I mean, I don't know if you follow football, N'Golo Kante is always cheerful, and yeah. So I think that's that song, and boom, what other song would I say? Um, Kichukiro late 90s, because Kichukiro late 90s is, I grew up in Kichukiro, first time I came back home was in Kichukiro with my grandparents, and Citron was my favorite Fanta, you know, and, and my grandparents had this crazy view that really just, it's like, you, the airport is right there, it's like a little frame, so you can see the planes just come back and forth, and so Kante, Kichukiro late 90s, and, and I'll be your light, I'll be your light because um, I wouldn't sit down and say I know exactly what the story is, but it's a connection of so many things that I've gone through and what I feel and relationship-wise and so many other things. So those three songs I think are really good. Silly, silly boy, what you think you're doing? Seeming really foolish. Sipping Citron Airport view. Sipping Citron Airport. I don't know. I don't know my boy though. He's just going to think about me saying this. But like... Yeah, I just want to be open with this. As an artist, and I hear it a lot from other people, identity is very important. So like I said, working on Barely Mix for me was a transition. So I wanted to get this off me, you know, like songs that I'd written so long ago, like, like I can't sit on this, I want these out there. So I sat down, record them, and like, boom. So now it's more of like, it's like a re re reinvention of some kind. Um, so identity is something that I'm working on now, and there's a lot of that coming through. There's a lot of visuals coming through, and so much coming through that's really, that I'm really excited about, and collaborations. So, yeah, that's coming too, and it's going to be nice. Yes, <laughs> Like, I know DJ Miller, like, before he actually got into DJing, and his vibe, his energy was so contagious, man, you know? He's the type of person who was really, he knew how to bring people together. I'm not going to sit down and say we were the closest of friends, but he was a fellow artist, and we had plans to work together, so the fact that that didn't really happen for me was, it's quite, you know what I mean, like, it's a fellow artist, it's like, like a football player dying and the other football players are like, shit, that could have been me on the pitch, you know? Um, so for me, it did impact me a lot. Like, just seeing what, other, the, what, seeing what the city felt like, even the diaspora, everybody's like, Jesus, it's Jamila, you know? 
And the way I felt about his energy is exactly how everybody else felt about his energy. So for me, I look at it as that, and also the fact that he's my fellow artist. So leave alone the fact that I might not even have really known him like that, if that was the case. But we, we need each other. So I do believe, even if, if I did have the chance to really, really work with him, we would have done some beautiful stuff, you know? So I, it was a beautiful thing to be able to write a song for him and, and be on his project. Um, the song Aiming for the Stars and Shani and Sophia. Hello everybody, my name is Mike Ahura and I'm contesting for the P. De Couvert uh, Grand Prize and voting for me would be great. I am urging you to vote for me and um, voting for me would be voting for the entire musical vibration that we are bringing to the table and voting ends on the 3rd of December. The links are in my bio and the links are in Prix de Couvert's bio so please do vote for me. Blessing. I mean, I, I applied for this in lockdown. You know, when they first announced the lockdown in March, I was like, shit, what am, what's, what's the worst? Like, I applied the year before, it didn't work out, and Social Mula was chosen. And I applied this year in lockdown. And randomly, I got a message, and, and we were quite excited about it. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much it. And slowly like that, the process comes through. You go to top 60, I think, and then you go to top 10. And yeah, the top 10 is pretty much the final. It didn't really work out, but it was a nice experience, you know? It's really nice to see that people vote for you. And it's, it's really dope, it's inspiring. It just keeps you motivated, it keeps you going. So as much as it was not what we wanted to win, it was a learning experience. I learned a lot from it personally, and you know, it's like visually, it gives you different, like, you know, it just shows you that your music is, it, it, it could be of impact, not to just your people and your community, but everywhere else. Getting to a final of anything is quite quite cool. I think that's the first time I've ever like jumped into something like that. And yeah. I think when I when I got into it I had this um this thing in me of like shit, what if I what if I actually you know the feeling of losing, I don't it's not nice, it's not a cool feeling, but it's a beautiful learning experience. You know what I mean? Because like it's a risky, it's a risky industry, it's a bit, you know. I think bottom line is it was a great experience. It was amazing.